Hi, my name is Josephine, and this is my best friend and trusty canine, Tora. In the background, that is our van, Snoopy, which just recently got a new paint job, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Just a disclaimer, I am not a uh, professional painter. I'm a full-on DIYer. This is what Snoopy used to look like from afar. It doesn't look too bad, but all of these Dodge vans have the problem of flaky paint. If you go a little bit closer, you'll see my attempt at spray painting and fixing all the flaking, which after a while just looked really bad. This is what I would like Snoopy to look like. I made this rendering on Photoshop a year and a half ago, and I've been keeping the image hoping to figure out how to make the new paint job happen without paying thousands of dollars for a normal vehicle paint job. First up, removing all of this pinstriping, this vinyl pinstriping. It has all of this decal work that just makes it look very 80s or 90s, even though this van is a 2002 model. So I found and taught myself a decent method of removing the vinyl using this rubber wheel and a drill. The wheel spins and creates friction, heat, and then that removes the vinyl. I have speeded up this video because even though it came off easy with this wheel, it did take a lot of time due to how much pinstriping was on there. There's a close-up of the wheel when it was new, and that is what it looked like when I had done the entire van almost spent. Then it was on to fixing the problem of some rusty spots I had above the front windshield. So I sanded the rusty spots with both a heavy and fine grit sandpaper, removing the rust, and then applied the rust treatment. I think I bought the rust treatment at a Napa or O'Reilly's store. Hopefully this means that my paint job will last longer. Next, it was on to sanding the van, which I mostly did by hand, even though I do have a little electrical sander that I used on the hood mostly. I highly recommend these sanding sponges. They come in a few different grits, and they follow the curve of a vehicle really well. Oh, and remember to wear a mask when you're doing the sanding, because apparently there's particles in vehicle paint that aren't great for you to breathe in. Then it was on to painting the van, starting with the primer. After much research, I settled on Rust-Oleum Farm and Implement Paint that I bought at a tractor supply company which I figured if it's good enough for a John Deere tractor or a Caterpillar loader, it should be good enough for Snoopy. And to apply the paint, I purchased a couple of different sizes of foam rollers, as I had read that they are the best for applying paint onto a very smooth surface. Also a nicer brush for detailing. And don't forget mineral spirits for cleaning. For starting the paint job, I taped off windows and handles, lights and bumpers. I could have done a better job with this, but uh, life is a bit too short. I decided to do a really thorough job with the base coat because my top coat color is very close to the hue of the primer. So I figured if I did a really good job on the base coat, it would be easier to apply the top coat without having any of the white from the original van color showing through. I used the smaller foam roller a lot at first, but once I moved on to the top coat, I used the larger one because it was easier to get less streaks. There we are, the base coat is on. This farm and implement paint from Rust-Oleum only comes in some pretty basic colors. I wanted something different, so it came down to mixing the paints to achieve my desired color, since it's not made for pigmentation. I think it turned out pretty well. I wanted a muted sage color, and I think I got pretty close. Two coats later, I was pretty happy with how it was looking. By the way, if anybody's wondering, I'm not painting the top of the van because it's fiberglass. Painting fiberglass and making the paint stick is a lot harder than painting a metal part of the van, so I've just resorted to keeping the top bubble in its original color. It's alright. I'm not mad at it. I think the final color of the van actually turned out better than my original Photoshop rendering. But as you can see in the image, I had in mind a little decorative border. I quickly dismissed the idea of using vinyl, especially since the paint job has a little bit of an orange peel texture. It's a little bit hard to photograph, but if you've been close to any farm equipment, you know what I'm talking about. So since I have done some stenciling for art and design projects before, I decided to give stenciling a go. And I'm pretty proud of the hack that I came up with for this situation, because the van is obviously metal, so it is magnetic. And I remembered this magnetic sheeting that exists for creating non-permanent signs for cars and vans and other applications. It wasn't too hard to source. I bought this from the craft store called Michael's. 
It came in a pretty big roll, so I had plenty of magnetic vinyl sheet to work with. I decided to simplify the pattern a little bit from my original design due to using a stencil. It's based on a very basic double diamond weaving pattern. With some simple math I was able to figure out how to make a continuous stencil. That is a stencil that you can keep moving over and it creates a continuous pattern. The magnetic vinyl sheeting is thin and you can easily cut it with a very cheap X-Acto knife as I'm showing you here. And then just peel out the bits of the stencil. I'm not going to go through how to make a good pattern for a stencil. There's plenty of YouTube videos on that subject if you want to learn more about that. Okay, my stencil is ready. Van, stencil, let's do this. I'm starting in the back of the van. As you can see, it adheres nicely to the van due to the magnetic properties of the stencil. I made sure to scuff the paint a little bit with uh, some sandpaper, as my paint job is new and I wanted to make sure that the paint has something to adhere to. And I decided to use the leftover black paint from me mixing the van color. This farm implement paint by Rust-Oleum does come in a spray can as well, which would have been handy. However, that is not sold where I'm at right now. And I figured this way I wouldn't have to worry too much about overspray. And also this manual paint will create a very durable finish. A thicker layer of paint that might hold up a little bit better from the scratches I usually get when off-roading around sagebrush. A couple of other tools needed, sponge brush, I had a sponge and some cheap artist brushes in case I need to do touch-ups. Here we are, it's not fast, but I'm just sponging the paint on, dabbing it on. And then keep moving the stencils, I did create another stencil. The fact of having small stencils instead of one large one makes it easier to move around corners, I figure. Mineral spirits, very important because a little bit of paint always gets stuck on the back of the stencil and you want to clean that off between uses so that the edges are nice and sharp when you put the stencil back on. All right, moving around the corner and on to the side doors. I'm constantly trying to perfect the application of the paint in a manner that would create the best and sharpest edges. It's a little bit hard because the paint is a little bit of that orange peel structure that made the stencil not sit 100% flush and the edges of this stenciling job is not quite as nice and sharp as I would have wanted it. I'm going to show you an image of it in a bit. I might have to go in with a little artist brush later and fix it up. But here we go, removing the stencil. I leave the stencil on the van until the paint it has dried a little bit because I found that if I peel it too early, the gooey paint on the edges will peel out and feather the paint. Having made more than one stencil helps so I can continue the project anyway. Here we go. Huh, not mad at it. I went all right. But as you can see, I was definitely left with a bit of a wobbly edge that I'm not crazy about. Which you can't see at all from afar, but close up. As I said, just going to disclaimer again, I am not a professional painter and uh, this paint job is fairly new. So I can't tell you if this is going to hold up for a long time. But I can tell you that the paint job came to about $250-$300 instead of three dollars to $5,000 professional paint jobs cost. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. I hope my prime work was good enough where this will hold up at least for a few years. I've also saved some leftover paint just in case I need to do any patching. Right, that's it for us. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. That might spur me on to make some more because I'm constantly doing DIY projects. If you have any questions on this project, you can always uh, drop a comment below and I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Perhaps there's an aspect I forgot to include in the video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't be afraid to try doing stuff yourself.